land with six drop and five drops, but he has, like I said, the Gyre Sage, which yeah, is... It's Saito Naya, according to uh, his archetype there. This is not and, Saito uh, Naya, but that's fine. We'll allow it to be Saito Naya. Uh, I, I just like that he tweeted, he's 5-0, defeated Wolf Run Bant, close to the point of no stake. <laughs> I guess the plan, if he falls out of the tournament, drops out of the tournament, he can... Uh, have a you little know, go, uh, go get some steak, and now you know, close to the point of no steak. Well, but as consolation, he's five and zero. Oh. His opponent is playing the Ben Stark um, uh, Esper, Esper Bliss, <laughs> yeah. and like most players, they have cut uh, uh, player cleansing. Yeah, goes with the. Uh, well, where are the detention spheres? Am I missing them? Oh, one, there, of the, one of the oh, boards. The board. the main. Main. He replaced them all with terminus. He has lots of verdicts and terminus. Six he has reps. a main deck Demir charm as well, which is interesting, and you see it right there. So he just slayed a uh, certain creature that's very foily, shiny in the corner. That's for control. Yeah. The glare. I can't really see that card that he killed. Yeah, it looks like a gyre sage. It's it a gyre sage. Yeah. So we're back to the game. He's got flint hoof board. He's getting devoured here, so we're back to a point where we have a blitz deck that is really lacking the pressure right now, but he's got a few uh, decent cards in late game. Adds a Burning Tree Emissary to the board. With nothing to follow up with, that's no, rough. so just a 2-2, two -two, yeah. And the Esper player has to be jumping for joy at this point. I, I see this match being a very quick match. And a Hell Rider from Dan. He has the Mirror Charm, which if it was a real removal spell, or excuse me, a... Uh, Azorius Charm. Azorius Charm, or not Azorius Charm, but it was like an ultimate price or a target removal spell, he could have handled this Hellrider. But at this point, he's going to just have to play Resto Angel and then block. Does he have Resto Angel? Oh, he's going to do, uh... He has Resto Angel, say, doesn't he? I didn't, I didn't catch it. I see he plays Snapcaster, and then plays, uh... Gives Devour Flesh Flashback. Casts he it. That, yeah, that's a pretty, pretty good he's, play too. But if he has yeah. Resto Angel, then he can just play it and block Hellrider. Let's see if he has Resto Angel. Please don't have it in your hand. Because that will make my brain hurt. Is that a Resto Angel? Yes, it is. Okay, well, that was an interesting play. Yeah. I mean, besides, he wants to make different use of that Restoration Angel. Maybe he just wants value out of it. You know, he wants to blink something. Yeah, yeah. Boros Reckoner from Dan Cato on an empty board after that Devour Flesh was flashback, and a Dissipate from Sean. Now, Sean could be taken off guard here, because he doesn't know that Dan has the the house in the late game. He doesn't know about Thunderball Hellkites, and four Hellrider total, and Domerade too. And Aurelia the World War Leader. Yeah. So Sean hitting all his land drops here. All right, here we go. Back. Hellrider, number two. Chance number two to do this, and it's gonna get done this time. That is a nightmare for Hellrider. That's why Wrestling Angel is so good, and I mean, even my list, I don't play it, but I have wanted to just for that play, because it's just, it kills just it. Just to jump in front of a hell ride. And it lives. It's just, uh, it's amazing. So that's what it did, and now Angel on the attack, swings in. I see a Thunderbolt help here coming here first. He's not showing us our hand. Nope, I think that's Force. Could be two land. I think it's two land. I see Temple Garden, and I believe Forest. Oh, no, here's a spell. So he has uh, one land, he has our, that's oh, the Museum Mortars. Museum Mortars, all right. So board is clear once again, and we've got a drown yard activation. Like how Dan hides them and then puts them in the graveyard where it's a big glare and we can't right. see it. Yep. So he <laughs> I'm milled, sure he doesn't realize. He milled that. three cards that will never be determined. Uh, I think Sean has a revelation and a charm. Yeah, he should still have an Azorius charm. Yeah, there goes revelation. Okay, so he lost glare, glare, and sacred boundary. All right. That's fine. Uh, okay. Revelation is resolved in here. I think it's Burning Tree Emissary, but that's totally a guess because... <laughs> so, uh, sorry, for, sorry. Uh, yeah, there's listeners. Burning Tree Emissary. I think the sun has appeared inside the room. Yeah, somehow it's, the glare on this match is worse than it has been all day. I don't know why. Uh, so, uh, Augur Bullis comes down. And I believe found... Uh, he has a Devour. Devour Flesh. Yeah, Devour okay, Flesh. So there's Thunderball Hellkite. Uh, this is going to get... Uh, he has Double Charm in his hand, so this is like no real... He's just going to Charm it, then he's going to uh, Drown Yard him. Or he can just take it and then Wrath, which is what he's going to do. Yeah, so he takes it. 
Dan's in our world of hurt, and we don't really need to explain why. Beyond that, it is turned late, and yeah. <laughs> he's still playing, so this is not good for him. Yeah, uh, so Drown Yard activation is end of Dan's turn. Sean on taps, gonna go ahead and Supreme Verdict here. Oh, Clears Sean, the board you, gotta, you gotta tap for one, man. You gotta get that free damage in. They always yeah. take it. <laughs> That's my favorite trick. It actually uh, probably doesn't do anything to the game, but it's always fun. Drown again at the end of Dan's turn. Dan has no play beyond a tap to Temple Garden. And uh, land go, says Sean. Here comes a revelation for a great deal. Yeah. Go. I don't know. Oh, no, Dan, he's going to drown him. Yeah, Dan might. Uh, is that, a, that might not be a revelation. It could be another verdict. He oh, does have revelation. He just didn't. He just drowned and then revelation for three. He okay. found it more. He'd rather have. Uh, rather drown him than have those four cards. He may have a second revelation. Uh, yeah. In hand. And again, like. No, I do this too. Of... When I play Magic and I'm this far ahead, I'll I'll do I'll play quick and just try to get the game over with. Right. Because Dan doesn't really have a chance at this point. Beyond like a, you know, a few mistakes on Sean's side. Yeah. He's gonna get counterspelled here. What is that, Domri? Domri, yeah. Domri Rad on the stack. And Snapcaster dissipate handles that for Sean. Drown you. This is that what we were speaking of earlier, the, the painful part for the aggro player. Right, where it's like, it looks like the game's pretty much over, but he, you know, feels should like should probably feel like he needs to to try to to do something here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's got no play and just keeps passing He has like a mortar and a land in his hand. Yeah, he's just just slowly drowning. There's not a series of cards really that can save Dan either, and that's a problem. Yeah, not to mention Sean's just, in it, his hand is packed. I yeah. believe there's another revelation. He's got Devour Flesh, he's got double Azorius Charm, and he's got Terminus. So whatever Dan can even muster. He's drawing is going another to, thousand cards here. Yeah, and he's just going to, yeah, Sphinx is a revelation again. Uh, but whatever Dan can even muster is not going to, uh, it's not even going to survive. Yeah. And now he's got Dissipate, Augur, Bolus in there, bunch of cards. I mean, Dan uh, knows he has a decent matchup against his control deck, so I, I would, there's no shame in going to game two and uh, trying your best after board. At the same time, he, it's not like he's uh, pressed for time. Either. Right, right. So right. he feels like if you, know, you can stomach it, sit around and get a, get your your bottom beat here. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but I he's can't stomach see what it. He can, what he can do? So Augur and Bolus for Sean. Whips. Yeah, that is a lot of answers. Okay, he's gonna discard a terminus and I think twice. Sean's not even attacking with his, his uh, Snapcaster. Yeah. I think he's just There's no all on the ground. I think Sean wants to see his whole deck because he has interesting cards in there like Domery and Thundermole Hellkite. So all Dan's doing at this point is giving Sean information for yeah. sideboarding. That's a very good point. Uh, because of the nature of the kill, the Drown Yard is providing Sean with information about his opponent's entire deck. So that's one thing that Dan may want to <laughs> want to think about when he's sitting here through the entire... Especially when you're playing such process. cool cards in your deck, like you're playing, you don't want to show them the one Aurelia, you don't want to show them three Hellkite, or three Hellkite and four uh, Hellrider. It's just too much uh, too much tech to show in one match. All right, so. Dan here is drawing another, I think he has like double mortar in his hand and Domery in his hand. He's gonna overload mortars here. So yeah, Sean doesn't care. Sean's not even using those guys. They, they, to they, do they're anything. they're like uh, ornaments. Yeah, and another drown yard activation. Land go. I think Sean uh, might. I hope he draws a Jace here. Domri gets dissipated. Yeah, no, no creature. Well, all creatures are going to resolve because Sean has all removal in his hand. But as far as the Planeswalkers, he has to counter his Domri's. Oh, yeah, I think he saw Aurelia yeah. or a Boris Reckoner. One of those yeah, two. I think what Sean should do is say, "Can I look at your graveyard?" <laughs> <laughs> I bet he can see it a lot better than we can. Yeah, he may have already gotten a good look at it uh, if, he's, if he's paying attention to what's being drowned away. Yeah. Sean, you have alternate price for a Hell Rider. He's got 
Oh, yeah. there we go. Okay. So with nine and a half minutes gone in the round, Dan scoops him up. So that was that was rough for Dan. Uh, very rough. And I think the strategy there's more to be gained from conceding, like we were talking about there, before your whole deck's revealed, than uh, just drawing each creature that you know is going to be dealt with easily. I would have conceded, but like I said, Dan's deck's not so bad against the control decks. He's got a lot of uh, hate cards. He's got three Boris Charm, which are amazing. Two Garrick Relentless that are amazing. He's got the most, the, the, the strongest enchantment in standard against control is Triumph of Ferocity, which is a basically a Frexian Arena against this deck. Um, and even Thragtus, if he wants to bring in some hate, late hate game, and he's got some hate late game. And he also has two Oblivion Rings also to answer. So he's got a lot of cards. It almost looks like another 12 sideboard here. Yeah. Uh, let's see, he's got two, four, uh, seven, nine, eleven cards to bring in if he decides to bring Thrag Tusk in. And the easy cuts are Mizium Mortars, four. Um, and probably Gyre Sage, eight. And then maybe a couple of Thundermall Hellkites. And you can get to eleven that way. I think Thundermall Hellkites works against Sean's deck than it is against the Planeswalker variety that has Lingering Souls. So it's an easy cut. And Sean's got the huge the huge stuff. He's got the Jason the Boar, the Witch Main Ores. He's playing Purify the Grave, and again, I think Rest in Peace is, is better in that slot, but it's not applicable here. Um, He's also relying on Snapcaster Mage a little bit. Right. Uh, rest in Peace neuters that plan. Yeah. Usually you'll take that trade off and just uh, that watch your random opponent scoop once you land rest in peace. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's true. You don't need Snapcaster Mage yeah, if they, you've already won the game. Right, their their whole deck to dead almost. But, yeah. Uh, his sideboards as usual, you ran Defensive Sphere, you ran the Demir Charm, you ran the um, I think he's got a random two set tragic slip. He brings in the removal and he cuts uh, two, cut dissipate two. So he brings in four, cuts two dissipate, and he cuts uh, maybe a think twice, and either a, uh, probably another think twice, or revelation. Some one of the expensive card draws. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> like against the Nia Blitz sets, I really don't like four revelation, especially on the draw. Uh, three is fine. I think it'll do the same job for you. Yeah, and uh, you know you find yourself in a situation where you're cycling it on turn four, which is just awful. If you're lucky. If, yeah, exactly. If you're alive on turn four. <laughs> yeah. uh, the, the we, saw, that, we saw the guy uh, earlier die. Yeah. It was turn, Bernie Wendt right yeah. playing he had Sphinx's Revelation, but it does yeah. nothing when you only have four lands. Well, it does very little. Very little, yeah. And lands. game one, he died before he could even... Rev or, uh, right. He had the wrath. He had the wrath. He died on turn three. Yeah. Crazy. Crazy. So yeah, no, uh, no way to even, or he had to even get to that point. So. And he had a removal spell on two, or auger to block. He had lingering souls lingering on souls. three, and then died that turn. Yeah, that's something. He was that's Hellrider just, off the top. Yeah, the Hellrider. It was, it was painful to watch. It certainly was. Now, what do you feel like with this list? It's obviously not the same kind of Esper list that you've been running. Like, what are the, what are you looking at when you see this as far as like weakness is concerned? Why are you like when you look at this and see I don't, I, you know, I don't want these cards as much as I want planeswalkers. I see your the weakness will shine when you're playing the mid range decks and you're playing the control mirrors. Against the aggro decks, the planeswalkers are probably your weakest cards. Okay. Uh, Liliana is great. Zorn's great. Tammy is worthless. Jace is pretty bad against aggro. So it really it doesn't hurt in this matchup. But you really feel the sting when you're playing as Jun. We've seen Jun players rip people apart, right. um, where the Planeswalkers are pretty good against them. Uh, so in this matchup, you're not going to see too much uh, Planeswalker necessity. You're still a control deck. You have lots of wrath effects. You have lots of removal. You have life gain. You're in good shape. Um, and as long as you dodge uh, Jun mid-range decks like that, you'll you won't notice a difference with that sorts of list. Uh, let's say there's some uh, possibly a mulligan happening. Either a mulligan or some extended sideboarding. Uh, it looks like uh, Sean already kept his hand in Dan's mulliganing. A Naya Blitz mulligan on the play is not as bad as a Esper Control mulligan on the play. Uh, these Naya decks can still have pretty nutty starts here. But he's not playing one drops, is he? Um, 
don't believe so. We haven't seen. It's hard to call this a Naya Blitzdeck. Yeah, it's maybe uh, someone even mentioned it on Twitter. Isn't it more kind of like? Uh, it's not like, mid range. Uh, yeah, no, it's Efro's. It's Efro's Naya. But yeah. e but even didn't Efro have a one drop too? Didn't he play experimental one? I can't remember. I can't remember either. I'm pretty sure he did. Maybe he didn't, but I think he had a one one drop in there at least. But I know that this deck doesn't have the explosiveness of the Nias that we've seen around here more. Yeah, this is more just like Naya aggro, I guess you could still call it. But yeah, it's definitely an aggro deck. Right. It's, it's less all in, more, you know, uh, I'm going to get you on turn five like a normal aggro deck should. Yeah. I'm going to go yeah, cheat. I mean, Dan calls it Saito Naya. Right. Uh, it's a little off from Saito. He... Saito Naya, didn't, I think they had the Thrag Tusk Resto Angels in it. I know Saito posted a list possibly last night. Um, could I'll be more recent. Can... When I see, saw Saito's original Naya deck, this was uh, weeks ago, maybe a month ago. Yeah, let me see if I can find it. Cause, uh, I think Dan's Mulligan to five. It may be, uh, you know, if, if it was tweeted, you know, last night, which actually it was tweeted. What's today? Oh no, I think this was tweeted. It was tweeted today, so never mind. Right. I'm looking at Saito. Let's take a look. Let's take this a look. is just red. This is still a blitz deck. This is red green Saito. Uh, okay, it's, there's, there's white and asshole. Right. right. This is uh, yeah Saito aggro again. I'm gonna look read it off. Has the eight one drops, the Rectus Cackler, and the Strongblood uh, Kirk. Noble, Strom Kirk Noble. Yeah. Also has the the Flint of Boars and all that, where he does not have all those. Yeah, it's not the same. List. No, it's a I, I didn't get good it. like twenty cards different. It looks like. Dan on six cards has a turn two Gyre Sage. All right, if you see Sean's hand, he's got the magical card in there, the one that makes everything go away, all the bad men go away. <laughs> and he's got two of the cards to make all the bad men go away. Finds a terminus off of the auger. Dan can't be happy to see that. He now, and, and that, that's too prong. It's going to make him want to kill him quicker, like play everything out earlier before right. he gets a six. And run right into it. Run right into the supreme verdict that he's holding secretly. Yeah, so Boros Reckoner, Gyro Sage evolves, and he passes back. I want to see a, a Thrag Tusk next turn to give uh, Dan some uh, reach here. Watery Grave tap for Sean. Passes back. Maybe a Garrick Relentless. Be a cool card. He's got a Hell Rider. Right, evolves the Gyre Sage. All right, I mean, that's, uh, and sadly for him, he's going to fall right into the Supreme Verdict. So, uh, Reckoner gets in, Hell Rider gets blocked. Sean has a basic land, a basic island right there. Uh, but, oh, he oh, doesn't no, have double not, white? He's not going to Verdict, no. No double white. You're right. Ooh, that is disappointing. He still has some potential here. He's going to devour flesh now, so right. So he presumably gets, get the know. gyre sage with two counters on it. I yeah. think I sack Reckoner because Reckoner does the same amount of damage against his control decks, and Sage can possibly get you to play more expensive cards. Yeah, definitely sack the Reckoner. I think I would have left up a black just to bluff Tragic Slip, but then again, you would have yeah. cast it there, I think. I think so, too. I think, well, now that we know Sean has done it in the second white, this game is all in Dan's court here. If we don't hit that second white, this game is going to be over as quickly as it started. It's another Hellrider, looks like. Oh, oh Thunderball, Hellkite. Thunderball Hellkite, so... Evolve the Gyre Sage in for 10. At 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yikes. <laughs> he needs a second white here, or this game is going to be real rough for him. Yeah, he doesn't have a second white. No, he has an uh, Augur Bolus. He's got to play that and hope he hits a rule spell. Uh, he needs an ultimate. Nope, that won't do it either. He needs a lingering soul. Well, he could. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. There's no lingering soul. There's no out for your. He's control. found a devour flesh. He can gain himself three life. He can block and then eat it himself. Does he survive that way? So, he's going to lose or three. Jar Sage. Lose three go to two. Uh, no. Yeah, he's not. I mean, he's dead every scenario. 
The only way it doesn't die here is if Dan doesn't attack with a uh, gyro Gyrosage. sage. Which, no, he's still dead then. Just kidding, he's dead everywhere. Super dead. So what? Um, it doesn't matter. Dan's got this game. <laughs> Everybody in? Yeah. The two thumbs up. And that was so rough. Yeah. When you go yeah, with Ravnica block. And when you ask, and this is a great, I'm, I'm kind of glad this happened because it's a great point that I made earlier, or we both made earlier, mm -hmm. when we talked about the difference between my list and, and uh, Stark's list is that he runs like seven shocklights, six shocklights. Yeah. I run ten. You have to hit double white. You have to have double black for Liliana for me. I guess they only need double black. But you need double white, double blue, double black for most control decks. And to the bank on six shock lands is very greedy. Yeah. Interesting point. Yeah. And if he had more shock lands there, guaranteed that would have been a turn four supreme verdict into the the promised land. How many he runs he runs Oh wait, actually no. He's, he's, run, he's running my ten shock he's running the same amount of shock lands. That's yeah, it looks like he, he is. Yeah, I he take all that back. Up. Sean, you just got uh, pretty unlucky there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking at him going, okay, yeah. he's got no, one, he's got, two, yeah. three, six. And shock six. exactly the same amount. All right, uh, four, eight. No, he's got 11 shock cards. Four, eight, 11 shock cards. Yeah. All right, so he's even, you are a gentleman and a scholar. That's good. <laughs> That's good, yeah. I was just counting his white sources, right? So four, eight, and another six there, it looks like. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah, you should, I play eight or eight. Just 12, I play 15 white sources. So one more, basically the same thing. Yeah, so when you have 10 shock lands like Sean does, you should be able to hit your, your double colors. It's very surprising that he missed it there. Um, especially on the draw. And how many turns did it go by where he, he could have hit it? I, could have he drew both of his islands, I'm pretty sure. Right. And more than one watery grave. It was... Uh, yeah, this is... Uh, it was a rough... Draw, he had a couple. He had a drown. At least one drown yard. So yeah. All right. Well, that's a loss due to mana, um, and it happens to the best of us. So and all you can do is make your mana as best you can and hope you get there. Yeah, Dan was able to capitalize on that little uh, stumble from Sean's deck. So we've got a game three. I like having game threes. Me too. I like both players getting an opportunity to. Uh, to show what their deck does. Oh, I agree completely. I see Adam Posak walking around with another group of players, which makes me think that I think he's, he's heading toward the, uh, out of the tournament. Yeah, it looks like he's heading toward a uh, cube, a cube match, yeah. and he's got a cube in hand. I am slightly jealous. I'm not gonna lie. Maybe we yeah, can have a. Like, uh, we should have a live cube match. Yeah. Get him on camera. Be sweet. I like to see some uh, some mana crypt Jace Mind Sculpt to turn one. <laughs> Real interactive games. Yeah, cube shenanigans. <laughs> I mean, that's they're all shenanigans. They are. I mean. Yes, they are. All right, so we're all rooting for Sean Harwood, of course. Just kidding. <laughs> I. Uh, we're I ready for this whole match. I, I, I'm rooting for good magic. That's what Absolutely. I want to see. I want to see the Naya deck. Have his explosive draws, and I want to see Sean without a mass removal spell and see how he does. But he has a screen burning, and I think he has both white sources. Yeah, fool me once. Yeah, he does. Yeah, this is not going to happen again. Uh, so far, it's land go from both players. Sean, of course, on the play. And Dan, of course, not having any one drops, which is very surprising. I've not seen one of these without any one drops. Gyre Sage comes down, and its flesh is devoured. It is. It is. Mm, delicious. Sean is a uh, cannibalized that creature. He's got another shock. I don't. Does he have a three mana spell, or should he have played that Godless Shrine tap? We'll find out, I guess. He might have a counter spell here. Yeah, there you go. That, that makes sense. Dissipate for Domri Rad. Slight, so, slight bit of glare there. Trying to there. figure out devour flesh. Like since Dan gains the life, who devoured the flesh? I guess uh, it was Dan. I guess he forced Dan to. Yeah, well, I guess it, you are the, the you are the one who's sacrificing. You get to choose, so you're eating your own guy. Yeah, I guess I guess so. Yeah. So. Basically, yeah. basically, I'm forcing you to eat your own man there. So yeah, something, some kind of strange mind control. So another gyro sage for Dan, and it's, it's a miracle. Off the top for Sean, we'll uh, 
terminus. It's a miracle. Away. I was gonna say it would terminate the gyre stage, but it's not terminating it. It's just terminusing it. Terminusing, terminusinating it. Uh, and Dan again with his interesting Naya control deck. Ragtus, there's there's the man of the hour. I, I assumed he was gonna bring him in. Yeah, two in the board. There, none in the main. Yeah, and. He's, he's missing in the Saito part where he had Resto to go with Fragto, so it's, it really is just a valued creature at this point. So Sean's got Snapcaster Dissipate open. And a Hellrider. Dan with the full four Hellriders, so we're seeing those pretty much every game so far. Yeah, I mean, it's a scary card. It's definitely a card that's just good against everything. Except for Resto Angel, where we're about to see. He's Dan's thinking. Or is Sean? Hopefully I think Sean, Sean's thinking. Oh, I think Sean should let He says go. He says it's good. Oh, the Takes two. The, oh, yeah. Here comes the Resto. Yeah. Angel jumps down. Is that getting in front of Thrag? Uh, oh, he's going to wrath next turn. That makes sense, I guess. Okay, yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So, take if care he, of the front side of the If he blocked, but if he blocked Hellrider, he could just block Thragtus the next turn and not have to wrath. Went with the wrath plan, so cleared now, the board. Now he's kind of open to all kinds of haste shenanigans, where he didn't have to put himself in this situation. It is a Hellrider or Hellkite, excuse me. Yep, Thundermaw Hellkite comes in and smashes this in for been, five. Uh, we could have, uh, it's an interesting plays up to this point. So. Yeah. No play from Sean. He's got Snapcaster, and I believe, is that a revelation in his hand, or is it a... That's a, uh, he, what's he doing here? He's going to devour here in response to the boar. Gets rid of it's not a, I don't think there's a revelation. Right? I think it's another verdict, I want to say. I hope, Could be. I hope it's be. a revelation. It'll make this game pretty interesting. Uh, so Flint Hoof 4 comes down, gains haste, swings in for 3, Snapcaster gets in the way, and locks it on. Smiter joins the force for uh, Dan. Yeah, I feel like we wasted one verdict here, so he's going to have to verdict here. Okay, so it was verdict. And if, if Dan is able to assemble one more army, that, that used verdict, premature verdict is going to really hurt. Oh, and there it is with no creatures. Triumph of Ferocity. That card is usually... So now Sean's going to have to kill every creature that Dan plays. Because every creature will draw cards. So Sean has to... Well, he's going to let him draw cards here because he has a revelation that he drew, which is probably the best draw ever. <laughs> Pretty good. Isn't that always point, the best draw ever when you well, draw no, that? not always. When you, you, it's turn three and you need an Sorry. answer, you draw. When, in top deck mode, usually, we have a preface here when we're on turn uh, okay. 11 or 12. Sure, it's a pretty good, pretty good draw. Yeah. I don't think Grizzle Ram, but it's a tragic slip. I wish it was Grizzle Ram. It's pretty funny. So, so Dan got to draw no cards from Triumph. Yeah, Sean is uh, putting a stop to all that. It's funny, just you know, just to keep his opponent from drawing cards. It's important. It really is. So I think he's going to draw a card from Zori's Strong here. He's taking a look. What do I have available? Yeah, he's gonna draw a card here. Yeah, I'm gonna cycle Zori's Charm. Draw a card. Reckoner resolves and. Uh, Sean draws off the top. Plays Here comes a Wrath or some removal spell. I, I'm pretty sure he's on the same plan. Oh, no, he's going to let him he's draw cards. Uh -oh. Triumphal Ferocity. As soon as that Dan's going to draw creatures and play them into his Terminus coming up. Which is a safe assumption. What's in Sean's hand? He's got Terminus, he's got Resto Angel. I think he has multiple Terminus. And he has Resto Angel and he has Tragic Slip. Dan swings in with the Reckoner, and uh, that's just going to connect. Goes to 11. But Dan has a Garrick Relentless here. Yep, and there it is. I was predicting that would be a uh, nasty draw. This is going to make this game very interesting. Because now, Sean's going to have to end the turn with Resto Angel here. 
which means he's not gonna he doesn't get to do the terminus plan which he thought of allowing Boris Reckoner to live. So now he's gonna have to wrestle here to kill Garrett and then he's gonna have to let Dan draw another card. Or terminus is in wrestle. Terminus away to, yeah that's that's the other plan here. So restoration angel end of turn untap draw what do I got here? I've got a devour flesh that's uh it's something, it's something. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he's still going to give Dan an opportunity to draw here if he goes with a Devourer Flush. And he does. Oh, but he has Tragic Slip, too. He's really just using two cards here so he can keep his Resto Angel around. Yeah. Tragic Slip, your Reckoner, after Devouring Flesh on the Wolf. That Triumph is real annoying, and he's going to find that out the hard way here. Anything he draws pretty much allows him to just continue to draw cards. And there's a Hell Rider, which is luckily a, he is uh, used at his turn to cantrip earlier. So, so yeah, Hell Rider connect. connects, yeah. Sean at seven, draws for the turn. He's like a dissipate. Yep, right on time. I think he has to attack and wrap. If he's not going to, he's going to let him draw two cards. If he draws a couple threats here, like a, two, a boar and a, another hell rider, a boar and a hell kite, it's going to be lights out here. Uh, Dan keeping his cards close to the uh, vest there. Keep us excited. Can't see what they are, yeah. Dan's talking out loud or talking to his opponent. I want to see the graveyard here. I ended up in this matchup by boarding Sundering Growth line because I hate Triumph that much. It's yeah. so good. <laughs> it's a Frexian Arena, but it's not like it doesn't have any drawback. It's yeah. telling an aggro deck you're not going to have any creatures in play. Well, guess what? You're dead anyway then. So, I mean, you're going to have one in play. Even your 1 1 draws cards against control decks. Yep. Uh, I think he's. And here's, the sec here's what I'm afraid of. He's going to have this. Here comes the Dissipate. So I wish that Dan had a boar first, which would have been the bait card, and the second Hellrider would have finished. But it looks like Sean can't even think about this. He has to dissipate. He has... yeah, he's thinking, but... I think he wants to save this pay for rat up. He's going to take all this. That's so that's five. Going to two is just... I don't know. I don't like it. Does he have another revelation? He has a, no, he has two rats. Does he have revelation? You're right. Oh, never mind. Yeah, You're just, right. It, it was, uh, it's foil, so it's all, it's hard to see, and that's yeah. why I was kind of. I thought he had, I thought that was a supreme verdict, so that makes things a lot better. Oh, definitely let the Hellrider resolve then. Yeah, that was easy. So gain a billion. I like Sean's play now, knowing it's a uh, it was a revelation over a uh, wrath there. And restoration on Angel gets in front of one of the Hellriders. Leaving Sean at six afterwards, draws a power fountain off the top. Um, trying to see what he's got in his hand. See Snapcast. See, I think I see Detention Sphere. I thought I saw Detention Sphere as well. And Augur of Folis. Of course, that Dissipate that he's had, a couple yeah. of lands. That Dissipate is going to come in real handy for him. It's like uh, insurance, you know? Plays Howlin' Fountain Tap, swings in with his Restoration Angel. Gonna play an Augur and Bolus here, I suppose? Or was, no, he's going to go Here comes else, Terminus yeah. here. No. Nope. Oh, it was, yeah. For some reason, I saw the three that he tapped, and I'm like, oh, it's Detention Sphere. Yeah. <laughs> I think I think Detention Sphere, well, after he deals, uh, this game is gone back into Sean's court. After he deals with Dan's turn, he's going to need a Detention Sphere that Triumph, and that yeah. shit lock this game up and won't allow him to double draw out of this again. That's an easy counter spell. Yeah. Dissipate on Dan's Thrag Tusk. And right. pull his Reckoner resolves. I think, let's see, we should have, turn. yeah, he has removal spell for Reckoner, he has Devour Flesh. Yeah, yeah so he's going to go ahead and Detention Spear the Triumph of Ferocity and then Snapcaster Devour Flesh on the Reckoner. Uh, I think Sean didn't give Snapcaster. away his, uh, his uh, play here. <laughs> 
Yeah. It'll yeah. skim through the graveyard. Actually, he could. He has. He could Snapcaster dissipate too. So it depends on what he does. Yeah. I yeah. might. I might get a three here. Reckoner swings. Well, he's not. That's fine too. Snapcaster. Devour flesh. I don't. We might be missing a card in his hand because there's no reason not to play the auger here unless he has a resto or something in hand. Or another display. This is hard as hell. Yeah, I didn't, I didn't see either. Uh, so, locks on Smiter to follow up for Dan. And auger of Bolus for Sean. Let's see. Uh, Whiffs, I think. Oh, no, he found a Demir Charm. That's a pseudo whiff here. Dan's creatures are so big. He might use it for the old uh, alter your library aspect. I think I would. Are there any sorceries he's scared of? I don't think, uh, no, and there's definitely... Yeah, I think he's in, he's better off doing the uh, look at the top three. Yeah, if he would have done that, he would have stopped this Hellrider from happening. The uh, Hellkite? Hellkite, excuse me. So, Thundermaw Hellkite comes down and uh, swings. He goes to one. Yeah, he's... This has escalated quickly. This is not yeah, good. Yeah, it certainly has. So, Snapcaster jumps in front of the Smiter. He can do it to himself now. And Demir Charm finds Hallowed Fountain, Hallowed Fountain. I think it might have been a Restoration Angel, but I'm not something, sure. Something good. It's a, it's a white card. Oh, it's a Terminus. Okay. <laughs> that'll, uh, that'll help. But at one life, you're in this uh, is, Yeah, this is Dan's dangerous uh, water. dream zone here. Ace Guy dead. Boros charm you. Oh, Dan right, K.O. Man, takes that's... the match. That was intense. I love that. That was. That was unexpected. Yeah. I think Sean had very little chance to lose.